So today we're, we're giving the boat a really good clean and just like a refresh and organize because things get out of hand pretty quick. And then we're gonna get off the dock because we've been on the dock now for, it'll be two weeks, this, it's been about 10 days. So we gotta get off the dock and go do some exploring and diving and stuff like that. We've been working really hard, man. Like either we're missioning and shooting stuff or we're in here editing away. It's good. It seemed really productive and I wanted in the kind of creative headspace of making stuff happen. It's definitely hard to, for me especially, to separate work from kind of life and relaxation because you're doing it all in the same area. It's tough. Ha, <laughs> just kidding, it's the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to be cleaning. Smells nice, finally. That don't look nice. No, this ain't nice. This is the, uh, I actually couldn't describe what's in there without throwing up a little bit. I don't know what you boys are doing up here in the shower, but you better not be hey. washing your hair. Well. <laughs> With Delos clean and pretty on the inside, it was time to give Maggie a little bit of attention at TLC before hopping in the water to clean the bottom of Delos. At this point, it had been over 4,000 nautical miles since we kitted Delos with our eco-friendly experimental anti fouling and ultrasonic transducers. For the most part, it was holding up pretty well as long as we spent a few hours underwater every few weeks maintaining the soft growth. But lucky for us, the cold water here in the Azores has cut growth down by over 50%. What's your duty today, Kia? Um, today, cleaning the kitchen, and it's my cooking day too, so I'm start thinking what can I make so, to delight the awesome family we have. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. Yeah, I think it's, it's perfect timing to get off the dock. Everything's about balance, right? After being at sea for a while, I think the crew was keen to just be kind of at the dock for a minute and everyone have, you know, freedom and space. But now it's just, everyone's itching to like get back in the water and excited to dive and be away from everything and everyone. I'm stoked because Anchorage is beautiful. It's gonna be an interesting little tuck-in action, but it'll be cool, it'll be a good adventure. It's really hard around here to find anchorages because it's not like the, it's not like the Caribbean where the wind is always coming from the southeast and you can tuck behind any island and it's the same here. Every week you get these systems that roll through so it changes from westerly, southwesterly, southeasterly, easterly, and then northeasterly, and then it just wraps around. So no matter where you are, you, you're gonna get hit unless you're in a protected harbor tied to a wall. So uh, right now it looks like the wind has settled really good southwest for the next couple days. So it should be fine, but we just have to check if there's any systems coming through, we'll have to leave the anchorage quick because then we'll be on a lee shore. And it's all really deep rocky cliffs. So, But it's a little bit tricky because we're, we're kind of stuck. The wind's pushing us against the wall and we have these two boats behind us. We have a nice little obstacle over here. Oh yeah, here. and the channel is half the size it should be. Felipe would be mad at me if he knew I was filming this, but this broke off and is now right in the middle of this little channel area. But it's marked and there's enough room, so. But it's not too bad. Sean's in the dinghy right now, so he's gonna drive out that way, pull the aft of the boat out, and I'll use the bow thruster on the bow. And then once we're out far enough, um, we'll lose the line and then out, nice and slow. Okay, good job guys, good job. Nice work. That's it. 
it. That's the hardest part, getting on and off the dock. Just protected out of the wind. It's gusting out there like 20s, but these cliffs are so high in front of us that we're gonna be super protected in here. Wow. It's beautiful. You're yeah. gonna see stand? Stand I don't know, we'll see. It depends, the way the wind is blowing now, I don't think we're gonna need to stern tie, but in here there's a lot of random rocks that come up, and I'm, and, uh, I'm a little bit worried about that, so. Yeah. Blue and Sean are in the dinghy and with the depth sounder. I'm gonna check spots. Oh. Maggie, Maggie, Delos. Copy. So right here we have 16. Okay. Um. You remember those rocks we saw the other day? Can you just check to see the depth of those rocks, the ones that are just barely under the surface? There's one probably in front of my bow about 30 meters, and there's one off the, off your starboard side. Yes, sir. On it. This place is incredible, man. That's insane. Oh. I'm so excited to just wake up and forget where we are and then be standing out here like, oh, wow. <laughs> this rock is huge. Yeah, roger that. I don't think I want to go between those two rocks from here. If the wind comes down through the hills, it's going to spin us around and all the weight will be on the stern anchor. I might just turn around here. It's nice and flat. It's just as calm where I am and drop just off our port beam. And we're at about 15 meters here. Um, we're just going to spin the bow around. We're gonna drop the bow and then back in and tie a stern line off the back of Delos to one of those rocks over there. I think that's us, bro. Looks pretty good. The one thing we're gonna have to really be careful of is wind shifts. So if the wind shifts in here and that line chafes or breaks, yeah. we have so much scope out that we're gonna get, if we swing, we'll get close to one of these rocks on either side. Yeah. Um, but it looks like the weather's pretty good like this for the next couple days. We shouldn't have anything to worry about unless a squall comes through or something. Just keep an eye on the weather. Yep, and then we gotta check this line for chafing quite often. Yeah, okay. But that's it, now let's turn the engine off.
Carlos and Maggie seem to be sitting nice and safely in the anchorage. But we still wanted to go on a little recon mission to make sure the anchor had properly set. In 16 meters of water on a lee shore, anything that can add to our peace of mind is well worth it. And while we knew that most of the best dive sites were on the opposite, exposed side of the island where we couldn't take the boat, it was still fun to take our first breath under Azorian waters. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew was exploring the crazy coastline that surrounded us. Pumpkin and black bean soup. There's um, cream cheese in it that's sunk to the bottom. There's ah, a big dallop. What? Yes. I think, As he disappears into the darkness. Did he say a dallop? Yeah. Does he mean dollop? <laughs> there's a yes. big dallop. Yeah. <laughs> big dallop. Oh! What? Senor de Mio! Waking up in Dallas this morning is uh, it's different to normal, it's a different, different atmosphere than the last two weeks. It's very peaceful, no one's saying anything, everyone's just kind of like enjoying the noises of the, of the birds and the sea. It's very, very calm. This is, it's such a beautiful place and I think we're all really, really appreciating how lucky we are to be able to be here. What a beautiful day to wake up in this crazy anchorage. And it's even better because we're going for a dive today. Did that right, Ruben. So if everyone's diving, what am I gonna do? You're gonna do, sometimes when people are in the dinghy by themselves while everyone else is diving, yeah. they can film themselves and say, thoughts by, insert, dinghy b name. I mean, dinghy driver's <laughs> name. <laughs> Did you hear that? Okay. Oh, what just happened? Oh god, why'd you do that? <laughs> no, did you do that to him? Really? Oh my god. So weird looking. Yeah. <laughs> more do you put in one word? <laughs> he looks like from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So 
So, diver's hack right here. This is really cool. These lights are made by the company Nemo, who also makes the underwater drill that we have that we've really been liking. Well, anything scuba related is incredibly expensive. And these lights each are 8,000 lumens each, which is crazy. And they're only, what, three or four hundred dollars a piece? So we've been diving with them for six months probably now, and we really, really, really like them. Okay. Four meters. Lovely. Everybody did very good. Nice. Good job, guys. There was just one more cave mission we wanted to go on before prepping for the heavy weather we knew was on its way in.
What's the deal? Quick free meeting. Yeah, just a quick little. The weather is changing quite a bit since the last time I checked it. Like, well, every six hours when the new forecast comes out, it's changing. And a lot of the forecasts aren't agreeing, which is strange, especially 24 hours out, because normally all the forecasts within 24 hours they start to align. Pretty much, we have two uh, fronts that are that are coming at us right now, like two lows coming through. Here's the big one that's developing. Mm -hmm. This is a little local one that's kind of it's all going to mash into one. But one of them is like a small little local low, and another one is a big. Um, this guy right here that comes through so like six hours ago that wasn't showing like that at all that's crazy that's like a tropical storm looking yeah, thing so yeah so because it's changing so fast it's probably what's what's happening is this low is just continuing to gain speed and to suck up all this moisture from the south and just kind of wrap around so I think we should get out. Then we'll we'll start doing stern line and all that stuff. We'll tow Maggie motor down. And just like that, our two days at anchor were over. Oh, man. With the weather changing so fast and a big windy low headed our way, it was time to pick up the hook and head for the safety of the harbor. Can I pick up speed? Are you guys all right? Okay. Not good, yeah. Bruce is just tying up the line and then I'll drop Maggie back once she's done. Smooth, huh? <laughs> and what an anchorage, huh? I know, Shayla couldn't be there for a few more days. Luckily we got it for at least a little bit though. Yeah. That was really, really so special. Beautiful. Yeah, so cool. It's so interesting how the weather, the weather patterns here, it's not yet consistent. It's just always changing, so you kind of just have to play by it play by that, you know, and time it right. Well, the weather is here. That was predicted, but it doesn't seem to be blowing that much at all. But we're super protected here in the harbor, tied up to the wall. Although the storm wasn't as strong as expected, it still brought some swell. So Sean and Kia decided to go on a search for waves. Beautiful morning. We're starting to walk and trying to heat check to get to the wave on the north of the island, which is like five hours walk. So. Hopefully we don't have to walk all yeah. the way there. <laughs> oh. We ended up walking for three hours, but with such a beautiful view, we really couldn't complain. Holy, look at that! Yeah, meeting some locals, they're so cool. We're gonna interview these two beautiful ladies. How's it going, guys? Oh yeah? We eat you today, are you? Something that I love is how they are like tap waters in the most random places. Uh, how is it? Is it fresh? It's so fresh. Woo! Let's just drink from the source. Let's just do it properly. Oh, oh so nice and fresh. Nice this could be our ride. A local fisherman took us the rest of the way and suggested we hop in the back to enjoy the spectacular view. We got a ride! Go find some waves!
we found the way. Well done. Let's go get some waves. Good to be back in the water for sure. How's uh, your feet? Ah. It's just a little exfoliation going on there. <laughs> Next up on Delos, we take part in a 200 year old Azorian tradition. Learn about the damage caused by Hurricane Lorenzo. and head inland to have some fun canyoning. Just talk, talk to it like it's a person. Just like you're talking to me. Go. So Sean, we had a, a blue dye and it fell. Can you tell the story in an accent? We had a blue dye and it fell and bounced into the water. And then Sean takes off his, uh, his hoodie here and jumps overboard and grabs the blue dye from the blue sea. From the blue sea. From the blue sea. <laughs> Ain't nobody done that before because that is a hard thing. Most people just give up, go, it's gone. And he, gone. he jumps in and gets it. <laughs> He's our man. He's our man. <laughs> He's our man. Amen. Amen, brother. Oh, what's going on down there? Oh. I'm trying my hands. A true sailor can predict gusts at any time, even when you sleep. Good. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> Oh, see? Ah, that's crazy! It's coming into the boat! It's coming oh, out! Oh my god, we're gonna get a pot of gold! Where is it? It's here! What? It's just here! It's just like... Yeah, look at this Whoa! Whoa. Now you're give us a new end screen for the like, subscribe, ad. Ads. Hey, if you ever want to go sailing, but really not want to leave your couch, turn on to sdtables.com and come along for the ride. Mm. I like it. I like it, I like it a lot. Exactly.